Welcome to Disability Clinic, where we go behind the scenes with filmmakers with disabilities. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie Van, a Vietnamese woman with long dark hair, wearing some light blue scrubs and a gray fleece, sitting in front of a colorful bookshelf. And joining us today is Cora Linda, the CEO and founder of Space Dream Productions, LLC, whose latest film is called The Heist, which has just been submitted to the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge for 2024. So exciting. Welcome to the show, Cora. Thank you, Dr. Van. It is an absolute honor to be here. I'm Cora. I am a light-skinned woman with dark brown hair. I'm currently wearing a green top. Um, earrings from my mom that I have to shout her out. They're little dangly uh, crystal earrings and a little Jewish star necklace. I'm sitting in a room that has some framed artwork up on the wall on my, my right and a bookshelf and some other framed items on my left. So thank you for sending me a copy of The Heist. It was awesome watching it. And I'm going to try to just summarize it to just see, you know, if I really got the gist. So Lily, your character, finds yourself under a mountain of hospital bills. Very stressful, common, relatable experience. The heist plays out this fantasy where you're teaming up with a crew of disabled baddies to pull off an Ocean's Eleven slash entrapment style con to snag a prize that will help pay off healthcare debt and achieve some disability justice. What (laughs) inspired the concept for this film? Joking around that I was going to have to rob a bank to pay my hospital bills. (laughs) I live with several disabilities and um, that can mean having very large medical bills at times. And unfortunately, last October, I wasn't doing super great. And in November, I actually ended up being hospitalized. I ended up in the ICU on Thanksgiving. And when they sent me there, they told me that I needed neurosurgery, and that they were going to like have to cut up in my brain. And then when I got there, they told me they made a mistake, and they actually didn't need surgery. And so they sent me back to the other hospital. And then they billed me for... 24 hours in the ICU, plus two ambulance visits, plus the neuro review. And I was like, you could have killed me giving me unneeded brain surgery. And now you're billing me for it. And on top of that, I had been in the hospital for several days prior to getting sent to the ICU. And then I was in the hospital for several more days. So all in, it was about a week. Some of the tests that I thought I might need, just when you live with disabilities, you have to understand enough about your body and medicine to advocate for yourself. They literally told me tests take too long to run, so they are not going to run them. But I could go to a nursing home or a rehab facility or the psych ward. Those are my options. Wow. And... And I was like, even though I have abnormalities in my blood work, even though I'm manifesting clear symptoms, one of the tests was for Lyme. And they said that test takes too long. We're not going to run it. The day I got out of the hospital, I ended up being so lucky and able to get an appointment with a specialist who treats Lyme. And literally the in-office test was positive. And while I'm trying to deal with that, this film was kind of a nice fantasy. (laughs) Nice escapism. Yes. Thank you for sharing that just harrowing experience. I mean, so much frustration can come with needing healthcare. Like you're already not feeling well, you're already struggling. And then on top of that, you just might have the worst luck and have healthcare teams who are wholly unhelpful, getting it wrong. You know, they're human too. But at the same time, it sounds like you just had a lot of sort of bad examples. And then thankfully, there was a little bit of positivity and you did get some value eventually out of um, someone who is helpful. But man, I'm so glad you were able to pull through that and, you know, sublimate and manifest, <laughs> you know, something productive and a little bit more elevated out of that experience. There's a expression, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. So you have to like, do something, just keep going. And so yeah. I'm going to go into a little bit of the characters and maybe if the characters mm-hmm. in this film are based upon real people or maybe a combination of people in your life? Stevie, the actress who plays Star, uh, really is one of my best friends. We have a hashtag FAFS, which is friends at first sight, because we literally like met and it was one of those like, hi, you're my best friend now. <laughs> like that was <laughs> just how it's been for like the last 12 years. As soon as the genre came out of buddy comedy, her and I are pure shenanigans when we're together. Hi, I'm Cora. I'm Stevie. Wait, who? Oh, yeah. Cool hooping. Hoodies. The way. Bang! I'm dancing. So as soon as we got buddy comedy and it was for the disability film challenge, I literally messaged her and I was like, do you want to come to Florida and <laughs> star in a film <laughs> and help me write it? And and she was kind of like, um, I have two kids and a job, but <laughs> sure. 
So um, I have to shout out Dave, her dad, who uh, helped look after the girls while she was here. She flew out, was here for two days and flew back. So it was like fly, film, film, fly. Both of the characters are based on pieces of both of us. Like my character, Lily, is very stressed. She's very overwhelmed. She doesn't know how this is going to work. And Star's character is all of like the wild excitement and the like, yeah, totally. We're going to do this thing right now. Sarah, she's like the most unassuming I want to say badass. There's like no other word for her. We were trying to figure out like how to tell the story. And I was like, what if she's the fence? <laughs> Who's well, going to explain this to me? I'm not sort of a heist crime buff. Tell me what a fence is. A fence is someone who sells stolen goods. The like the guy that like knows Black the guy. In between. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Like the idea of Sarah in her like full kind of like pageant queen regalia with like the full makeup and the beautiful clothes and she's a fence. So consider those hospital debts paid and then some. For buddy comedy, because that's that's a wide, 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 wide range of genre. It, the examples it gave included Pitch Perfect, Rami and Michelle's High School Reunion, Hot Fuzz, Men in Black, Dumb and Dumber, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Frozen, <laughs> How to Train Your Dragon, Twins. Like, there's a lot. Any of movie with two people. Basically. <laughs> Is this your first submission to the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge? Yeah, wow. we've never done it before. So I, I'm I kinda, surprised, honestly. <laughs> we've done the 48-hour films before, but especially after the last one. Because we, my husband and I do, like, Spacey and I do everything ourselves we write we direct we shoot we edit we color grade we sound design we score we have a dialogue mixer that we work with we have a vfx artist that we work with and then obviously on set but it's just a lot so like 48 hours i can't keep physically doing that to myself that is amazing and you're reminding me like i think the laser scene was one of my favorite just sequences of the whole movie and clearly so much work and dedication went into the vfx like it looked amazing <laughs> To get all those VFX shots of the lasers, each laser beam was created and then it was animated and like the light reflection on the floor, like every element was made fresh for this. So the first thing we did was choreograph a sequence that could interact with lasers in a way that would require the simplest visual. When a laser goes behind a person, you have to mask out the person and it's more complicated than when the laser's in front of them or when they're moving and the laser goes under them. I worked with the VFX supervisor, Alex Hefner, when we kind of went over how to best do it. And then we had a stunt double, Hannah Bender. We literally, we had people like holding her legs when she like lifted up one hand. <laughs> um, these two big guys like holding her. We filmed that first. So Sarah was on set dumping that footage while Stevie and I were filming the rest of the heist stuff up in the hallway so that that footage could get dumped so we could send it to Alex, who's in Canada, leaving for a film premiere for another film he worked on. So we had to get him the shots right away because he had one day to make it before his wow. flight. So then he was editing while we were filming the second day and Lily's phone was my real phone. So I'd have my phone in front of me and I'd be like reviewing shots <laughs> while on set, like between takes, like they're resetting and I'm like looking at the shots and like checking the set and then checking the shots and then doing my lines and then checking the sh It was, <laughs> like I said, I was exhausted. <laughs> by the end. This is where I think that the fact that my mind is kind of all over the place all the time anyway. It like helps because making a film gives me 50 million things to latch onto at once. And my mind is just like, the <laughs> with like everything. <laughs> I'm just like Iron Man with like the digital things around him, except it's no one else can see it but me. Acting and directing at its finest. I want to take you back to the fact that I, I just love how half the dialogue in this film is performed with ASL. I feel like that's one thing that really makes the heist stand out compared to a lot of other short film submissions that I've seen over the past years. What was the process like of incorporating so many different representations of disability? Was it just sort of natural because of the cast you'd already compiled or was that more intentional? I think we intentionally compiled a cast that then made it natural. Like yeah. being a filmmaker with disabilities, I already have a network of other filmmakers with disabilities. Stevie is my like absolute bestie and she's deaf, but 
It wasn't like, oh, you're deaf. You're going to be my best friend. Like we, <laughs> it just was that way when it's like, oh, here, you need to have people with disabilities in these roles. I actually had worked with her. We'd done a film that had a, a couple lines of ASL in it several years ago that she'd consulted on. I knew I wanted it to be authentic. If I understand or not I, but if Lily understands ASL and if Star is deaf, Star doesn't have a reason to simcom while talking to Lily. Like that's her language. Lily understands it. She's going to speak it. Okay. I'm so sorry. You're going to have to explain. You're teaching me things. Explain what simcoming is. <laughs> oh, sure. It's simultaneous communication. Okay. So verbal and ASL. Yeah. So ASL has very specific and I'm, I'm speaking on this as someone who's learned it. So I'm obviously not like an authority. I can just share my understanding, which is ASL has a grammatical structure that's different yes. than English. So like in English, you'd say I'm a problem solver. When she's signing to me about the value of the art and don't worry, and it ends, the caption say I'm a problem solver. But if you look at her signing, she signs problem solver me. Yeah. Because that's how you would say it in ASL. Like I'm sure we could have done it where like all of Lillian Starr's dialogue was purely in ASL, but that just didn't feel totally authentic, especially if I'm playing that character, like I can sim calm, <laughs> but I, even that's very limited. I accidentally signed to Sarah cute you instead of who are you? One time I signed lemonade you, like I just kept messing and seeing you would just laugh and like stop me because <laughs> it was really exciting uh, to kind of put it together so fast. The story fell together very naturally because of everybody involved. So. I have mixed mobility. I have varying days of energy levels and varying days of what I can and can't do. And I don't really ever see that shown anywhere. It's usually someone's either in a wheelchair or they're not. That's a very long way of saying that all of the different pieces of what went into the story kind of both came organically from us collaborating on it. But that's why uh, Sarah, Spacey and Stevie all have associate producer credit because mm -hmm. it really was a collaborative effort in getting the story put together and contributing all the elements and getting it going. Stevie and I did the actual like writing on the script, especially when it came down to like what parts are SimCom, what parts are ASL, how exactly would we say things? Her idea, she had the idea of the part about her mom like we were trying to explain like, okay, she's deaf, why is it? Like character dynamic with you guys. It is a nice callback later in the film too. It's one of those things where like when you're working with amazing people and you're both on the same page, it just kind of like gels and things sort of fall into place really easily. And like when we got the prompts, we were like, okay, how do we do this? When we knew, okay, we're doing ASL, but she's talking. How do we explain that? Do we just expositorily go like, well, my mom made me talk that's not as interesting as she makes a loud noise, the hearing person complains, she complains about her mom, they reminisce for a second, it's a little bit more organic and it feels oh, yeah. more natural. Absolutely, so. great writing. I mean, you've talked a lot about sort of what was challenging and thankfully what was easy, just given you were starting with a great base of good people coming from a lot of different experiences. And so you created this film for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. It doesn't sound like it's been the tightest timeline you've ever had to fit into, but you were still dealing with limited resources and a shortened timeline. I thought the film was fun. It was kind of lighthearted, even though the initial kind of subject matter is not so lighthearted. It was cool. It was fun. I love the split screens. I love the music. Like it was just a fun little short journey. And I just wondered what you hope audiences will get after watching this film. I hope that they will both see the competency of the filmmakers. I know I said I did a lot of it, but like when I say the filmmakers, I couldn't have done this without Stevie, Sarah and Spacey. Um, but even on set, we had uh, some PAs, you know, we're moving on to another place and they're setting up the next thing. And then we're moving on and they're cleaning up. One of them was like helping us order lunch. The other one, like it made everything flow a lot easier having those extra hands to help having in the main director writers producer cinematography editing color score sound design production design wardrobe styling props designing graphic design title cards hair and makeup location scouting all of those jobs were filled by a person or people with disabilities there was not a single able-bodied person on any of those roles so i want someone to watch the film and know that that's what we're capable of that is the most 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 important 
And then I just also want these characters to be real people. Like it was really important to me that like the disabilities are not held up as superpowers and they're not ruining our lives. Yeah, their disabilities are a part of it. And yeah, it's part of who they are and it causes concern and it causes things. But even like Star goes running up the stairs in her excitement and Lily's like, um, and then <laughs> that's my favorite moment. <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, and then Star's like, and then it just hard cuts to the another in an elevator. Like, okay, good. Let's make this heist accessible. We're going to take an elevator to the second floor. And Lily doesn't like freak out at Star and like yell at her and flip her off and be like, you know, how dare you forget that I can't take the stairs? Because like, that's important too. The same way that I want people to be patient with me and my limitations and my needs, for lack of a better word, when I need accommodation, when I need to coordinate accessibility, I also have to be patient when someone's genuinely trying. It's a give and get on both sides. I guess the short version is I want people to be entertained. I want people to see what a fun time this was. I want people to be like, woohoo, when they see the movie. And I want them to appreciate the people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera that brought it to life. And I want to hopefully help people see people with disabilities in a different way and kind of normalize the fact that we're just people. I love yeah. that. I think you really uh, captured what it means to authentically represent a diverse array of disabilities um, and filmmakers and how you collaborate and problem solve. It's just wonderful to see disabilities represented without that tokenization, without that, you know, those classic tropes that, you know, have just been seen too often. I, we're in a newer era of filmmaking where disability can be more authentically shown on screen. And I'm so proud of Space Dream Productions for just making this project happen. I'm so proud to collaborate with you guys and work with you. Like, I'm just honored um, to be a part of this. So thank you so much for sharing this work. And I'm so excited to promote it on this Ability Clinic. Thank you so much for your support. Honestly, I love that the Disability Film Challenge exists and that they provide this space. Even just knowing that we're getting seen by the industry judges that are going to be watching this, even just knowing who the sponsors are, I think they got over a hundred films from around the world. Wow. So we're- it bigger and bigger every year. This was the biggest year from what I saw on their social media yeah. afterwards. It was just really cool to see the amount of support that we had coming together for this. So fingers crossed. Yes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yes, you already have so much to be proud of, um, but I'm really excited to see all of the films that have been entered this year. So yeah. please check out the heist on the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge YouTube coming out soon, April 13th to the 21st. Uh, like and comment on the heist, especially, but on all of the ones that get you excited about movies and disability representation. If you're into conversations about disability, filmmaking, and cool people in general, hit that like button and subscribe to Disability Clinic for more accessible and inclusive educational content. If you want to support our channel even more, check us out on Patreon, where Disability Clinic on Patreon, it'll be linked in the description below. Until next time, thank you for watching, listening, and learning. See ya!